Okay, guys, we're back in the cornfield again. We leave our trap set down here. Got us another culprit. We lost all of our peaches on one of our peach trees and knew there had to be something else out here. So we set the trap back and we found our culprit here. So we're going to have to dispatch of him also. There he is hiding up in the thing there. You hear the flies around him? Okay, guys, these things are about as nasty as they come. Uh, there's flies all around him. He's been up in some dead animal eating on him and stuff, and we don't like this kind of stuff on our place here uh, because they just spread germs. They destroy your crops, and um, they take your food system away from you. So we're going to have to get rid of him. And that's one of the things about homesteading. you got to be constantly on guard. They'll eat your chickens. Uh, they'll eat your eggs. They'll eat your fruit. They'll eat your corn. They'll just destroy a homestead, so they have to be dealt with. Okay, guys, we're down here in our cornfield. This is our blue Mochican Hopi corn. Uh, we got it like in, we had it, it's in two stages. Uh, we planted the first stage, lost a lot of it. Second stage is coming up. It's kind of all mixed together. The grass is coming all up in it. We, you know, it, it is what it is. So we're going to pull the ear here. I mean, we look at it. The, uh, the silks is good and brown on the top, and usually what I'll do is reach in right there somewhere, and if I mash a little bit and I feel the kernels busting, I know it's probably already to the good stage. You see right here, the animals has already eat this ear, and it's gone. So we're going to take this one off. Being this stock is already leaning out, get some of the weight off of it. And let's just see what it, oh yeah, see how easy it come off? Now you get this mutation of where there's a second ear trying to grow on it like this, it will never produce. Uh, so we just kind of pull that off. We'll feed that to the pigs, but look at this. How long that thing is. Wow. Thanks. Even if you put it from there to there, it's still a good 12, 14 inches long. Got a worm. This is a corn earworm here. They get in the tops of it. Down in when it gets hot down here in the south, these things will wreak havoc on a corn field. That's what a corn earworm looks like. Now, they come in different colors. Some are brown, some are green. Uh, but this here will be chicken food, so he'll go to the chickens. We'll cut it just below where he's at right there, and it'll still be good. That's not a problem. We're going to take him out and put him over here for the chickens. Actually, I may put him in for the turkeys. I'll put him in that right there. But this corn, you can see where he's been down in there. We'll have to scrape that out. But the corn here is in its white stage. It's in what's called its milk stage. Now, when it begins to mature, this white will turn to blue. And this is where we get blue tortilla chips from is this corn. So you see corn is white until it turns blue. We're going to pick a couple of these, maybe three, maybe a nudden or two to have to eat today. Um, just, just to see how the blue mochican corn tastes. Um, so we're going to continue on through the field and see if we can find a few more here that's ready to pull. This is what happens when birds get in your corn. These old blue jays, they'll come down here and sit on top of your corn stalk and they'll peck into here and they peck the top of it and ruin it. Um, let me pull this down. Now, this one didn't pollinate good. So I'm going to show you. See how we was talking about it begins to turn colors? This is the blue stages starting to form on it here. Doesn't mean that this is bad. Now, we can still cut some of this off and use it. But it's just wanted to show you what's what happens when birds get on top of it and start pecking. And you don't get good pollination on this here. This was during a wet season when it uh, was maturing. And it washed a lot of the pollen off and didn't get pollinated. Um, the corn goes from a white stage to this light purple stage to a dark blue stage. is where we get our blue tortilla chips, our blue, um, any of our blue corn products that you see on the market comes from this, uh, this blue corn like this. Okay, guys, we talked about the tassel corn. We just come down here to our blue mochican corn, and we found out, look at this. We have a tassel corn right here 
that is actually trying to mature. Now, the birds have eaten on it a little bit, but um, fire ants. Oh, the fire ants are all in it on the backside and everything. So the fire ants is all in it. So it probably will never amount to anything. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to take it off and feed it to the pigs because they, they could use that. They would enjoy that. We found another one right here beside it, right here. This one just grew right out the top of it. Look at that. These uh, stalks, remember we told y'all before how short these stalks will be when you have these tassels come out the top of it and it makes an ear of corn. Look at the difference in the height of it here. The ears of this other stalk is higher than this one is even at. And this is the top of the stalk. So it'll, like we told you before, it'll always be the little short ones that do this kind of stuff. And here's the here's the tassel actually trying to come out on it right here. Let me peel this down. Here is the tassel right here. It never made it out. Now look up here. Get it turned around. Here's the tassel right here trying to come out of the top of this ear of corn. So it never had a chance, both male and female parts. It didn't shed its female parts um, when it was in its growing process and actually made an ear of corn on top of the stalk. Another ear. Now that one's going to be turning blue on the inside, I can tell you. All right, we have our Cherokee tan pumpkin planted along the edges here. Uh, there's some out in the field. And the grass just, because our corn's in two different stages, it came up, part of it came up, and then the other part of it didn't come up. We replanted. And then by the time it got to where we needed to plow it, the first corn was too tall to plow it, so we had to just kind of let it go. Now we've got grass in there like this deep, you know, three feet deep. And we've got our Cherokee tan pumpkins that's running out in there. Now there's one blooming over here. There's one blooming over there. Not sure if the Cherokee tan pumpkins are going to make in this deep grass or not. So this is going to be something that's going to be interesting this year to check out and see is, uh, is if they actually make pumpkins in this deep, deep grass. And if it does, are the, uh, are the rats or anything going to come in there and eat the pumpkins up? So it's going to be a learning experience for us this year on this particular system. I'm not really liking it that much because I like my stuff to be clean. Um, you know, once the corn comes off of this, we'll turn the cows in here and let them eat the rest of it down if our Cherokee tan pumpkins aren't producing. Also, for a backup, just to be safe, we planted some up on our hoogle bed up there because we don't want to go a year without our Cherokee tan pumpkins. Uh, we've really enjoyed them this past year, so we've got a few planted around in other places just to kind of as a backup plan. Okay, we've got the uh, supper plate done here. Um, I'm going to be trying the corn. Uh, looks like one that has fried it in a skillet. We're going to see what it tastes like. Really a mild taste. It's uh, not bad. Really not bad at all. Now, what did you use? Oil, a butter or butter on this? I can see it was one day past picking time because I can see the blue tips on the corn here, which tells me that it was a day or two past its time. But overall, it still has a very mild taste, a very corn taste to me. Uh, it's it's uh, even though I know it's corn, but it has it tastes different than Danny corn. It tastes different than sweet corn. Uh, but it's not a bad taste. It's a really mild corn taste. I, I really like it. Okay, we also have some of our home-raised 
blue slate turkey here. Now, this was one of our big gobblers. And this is the, uh, I call it the feather in the breast, or some people call it a tender or whatever. Um, this has been uh, pecan coated, looks like, and cooked in the oven. I really like that taste. I really do. It's not as tender as store bought chicken would be, or store bought turkey, but it's not bad. It's really not bad. Cut into smaller pieces. Um, it's really not bad. It's got a real, it's got a real good taste. And they say that that's why everybody goes for the heritage breed is because of the taste. So we have to try it. Yeah, try a piece of it there. It is? It's not tough. No, it's not tough. Mm -hmm. It's different, but it's, I mean, it's got a really good taste. It does have a good taste. Try to come on. Check really. out. And I knew the, the darker colors were starting to head toward the. Yeah, they're, they're getting a little bit, about a day or so past due. See, it's kind of like a, like a grits taste. It's kind of mild. It is more like grits. Yeah. That is pretty good. I really like it. I think I probably will grow it again. Yeah. If I had picked both ears, oh, they were yellow. But yeah. I thought that one ear was so pretty. Oh, I, I know. It's, it's they were beautiful ears, yeah. So that's our skillet fried corn. Yeah. And our home raised blue slate turkey coated in pecan meal mm -hmm. and baked. Baked with, with onions and peppers on top. Onions of it. and peppers, and then he's his carrots. Of then, course, that's canned carrots. These are canned carrots from Deep South Homestead. So we're good. Thank you, guys.